Use the power of AI to elevate your decision making or build your own algorithms to best compete in the markets. To learn more about Trade Ideas and take advantage of a discount code to get started, please visit trade-ideas.com forward slash Sean. As a trader to be successful, you have to be willing to say to yourself, you know what? I am going to be uncommon amongst a group of uncommon people. Because if you're successful as a trader, that's exactly what you are. You are uncommon amongst a group of people who are trying to be successful. That's my new friend, Don Hensley from Speed Trader. We get into a great chat about what it takes to be successful. And Don sees what it takes to be successful from his perch at a brokerage firm. He sees all the accounts that come and go, and he's noticed the commonalities that exist between successful trading accounts and unsuccessful trading accounts. And I love this meta topic that we get into about being successful as a trader means essentially that you are uncommon. Successful trading is uncommon. The vast majority of the people who engage in this practice end up being net losers. That's just the way it is. That's a fact, and we can't hide from it. So if you are going to be successful, you need to be uncommon and you need to be uncommon from the other uncommon folks who make money because the fact is everyone who makes money in the markets does so in their own unique way. There is no one formula that works for everyone in every situation. This topic alone is worth the price of admission for this podcast, but we also get into how Don got into the business. We also get into the things that people need to focus on and be aware of as traders. Look, there's recipes. You got to follow the recipe and you got to have grit without it. Forget about everything else. And one thing that Don and I definitely agree on is that we are all traders in some way, whether you are engaged in the act of speculation of stocks, options, futures, currencies, cryptocurrencies, whatever, even if that is not your bag, you are still a trader in some way. If you have a job, if you have a nine to five job, you are trading your time for money. You are trading your time with your family for an employer. We are all traders, whether we like it or not. Well, like I said, Don is a new friend. We've gotten to know him over the past year, working on some projects together. And his company is a sponsor of the upcoming Trade Ideas Conference coming up in October in beautiful San Diego. So we talk about a few things we've been working on. All in all, Don is a smart, fun, engaging, funny guy. I think you'll enjoy this conversation. Don Hensley from Speed Trader. Well, hey, Don, I appreciate you being uh, doing this podcast with me. You and I got to know each other a little bit back in the spring. You and I were participating at a conference. You were a sponsor. I was a speaker. For whatever reason, you and I just hit it off right away. It must be kindred spirits, whatever the case may be. But uh, it's been great getting to know you a little bit over the last few months. And uh, you and I have partnered up on a couple of things since then for our respective companies. And uh, we're doing some more stuff this fall. So, hey, man, just let me say thanks. No, thank you. I, I, I think... Whenever you have a happy hour that's right after a conference, it makes it easier to <laughs> <laughs> to get through all the travel and everything else. But no, I uh, when when you mentioned that you had one, I checked it out. And again, thanks for having me on today. I'm you know, really exciting stuff. Cool, man. Well, I, I'm going to assume that most people that listen to my podcast don't know who Don Hensley is, and that's fine. You don't have a very public profile on social media, so. What's interesting about me is because I'm licensed, I have to watch what I do and say in the event that I do have a social media profile. And the reason is because, quite frankly, some of that could be misconstrued as advice. Right. So for that reason, my LinkedIn is very generic. I mean, you can look me up, shoot me a message if you want, you know, but my LinkedIn is very generic. And you know, on top of that, I, I don't know, maybe it's just it's 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 me just being overly cautious, but I'm kind of just a private guy. You know, um, if you if you want to, you know, talk about whatever it is, give me a call at the office. I'll be more than happy to chat with you. So you're saying you're not a typical loudmouth New Yorker. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, no, that's that's I'm totally loud uh, <laughs> and, and totally typical. <laughs> but it, in the eyes of the Internet public, that's a completely different story. Well, Don, I'm going to do my best to get you in trouble here. So bear with me. Cool. Let's do it. <laughs> well, 
Well, hey, so let's talk a little bit about your background. Uh, I mean, right now you currently work at Speed Trader, and we'll talk about Speed Trader and some of the cool things you guys are doing and some of the things we've partnered up on. Uh, we'll talk about that down the road. But but I'd like to like maybe go a step back and let's talk about your career in finance and, and how you got into this business and where your interests lie and, and, and that kind of stuff. What gets you up in the morning, I guess? When I was a kid, this is going back to third or fourth grade, I was terrible – at math, horrible. And I think just out of desperation, when you know, my father was a very hardworking guy. My father was in real estate. So he would come home after an 11, 12 hour day and really not want to talk to me about arithmetic, you know? <laughs> and I think that that frustrated my mother at one point. So she just, she brought me into the living room and I'll never forget it. She looks at my father and she says, your son is horrible at math. And if you don't fix this, he's going to grow up and be an idiot. <laughs> right? Wow. So dad, dad got up, came to the kitchen table. I was defeated, you know? And so he says, listen, he says, for all these problems here, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put a dollar sign in front of each set of numbers. And I want you to pretend like it's your money. And I tell you, when he said that, I started doing it and something clicked. And I've always been interested. Every single corner of finance fascinates me, everything. So over the years, there, you know, I would, and to this day, like, I'll read you know, mission statements for companies and, and, and just, just get blown away by what it is that, that some of them are trying to accomplish. So long story really short, I went to Fordham University that's down there in the Bronx. And my wife and I, my wife went to the University of Rhode Island. Every year, Fordham and URI, they play each other in basketball. And we go to the game every year. You know, as simple as it was, we were sitting in the bleachers. And guy next to me had a job worked on Wall Street, told me to give him a call the next day. I did. And that's how I got started. Wow. You had never thought about working on Wall Street at, to this point, right? I was in the mortgage business back then. Okay. And I was doing really well. And he said, well, listen, and you know, it's funny, we he dealt, his desk was fixed income. So bonds, bond funds, dividend paying stocks, that's what our desk did. And he said, well, listen, if you can understand mortgages, you can understand a bond. I could still hear him on the floor. I mean, he would be, you know, it's a bond. It's easy. There's not a lot of moving parts, coupon, maturity, rating, value. That's it. You know, I mean, I could hear him, you know, screaming over everybody trading back in the day. But that's, yeah, that's how I got started. Wow. So were you trading bonds or were you involved in the selling or agency of bonds? Both. Okay. Okay. Both. I started as an assistant to the traders that was there. He saw that I had an aptitude for being able to try and provide solutions and moved me into the sales side. So, you know, that, that's interesting. You bring up something that I've never quite been able to understand uh, being in this business as long as I have. I've been in business 20 years and I've known people who are traders. Obviously, I've known people on every aspect of the business. But one of those job titles, I never quite understood what that meant. And that was, quote unquote, sales trader. And so you kind of touched on it there. You were you you were good. You had an aptitude for finding solutions. So me and my dumb trader brain, all I think of is, it's a trade. I buy, I buy low, I sell high. That's it. What, what's the solution here? But I know there's a lot more to it. So would you mind maybe kind of explaining to me a kind of a day to day of what a sales trader does and what you did? Sure. So at the desk, we would go out and buy whatever it was. The desk would go out and find them, whatever it was and wherever they were. So let's say there were a block of preferreds that are trading at a discount. The desk would go out and offer less than what they were trading for. And if the seller bit, 
it then became my job and other individuals like me to call around and move them. So you're out there, you're out there trying to find basically mispriced merchandise and you know, not garbage, obviously. Right. I mean, you're, you're looking for, you're just looking for deals that are, you know, you have a motivated seller or whatever the case may be. Uh, you're going to, you're, you're willing to take on that risk um, and, and, and then find buyers at a suitable price. Is that right? That's right. You know, what would, I think it was Warren Buffett that said, you know, you want to find value in cheap. And I, I think that that's a great mindset across the board. And when people ask me, you know, I get questions all the time. What is, what does a tremendous trader look like? Especially on the retail side. Now it's speed trader. What does a tremendous trader look like? And I tell people that step one is to understand what the market is. The market is a buy and a sell, right? The, and that's the highest bid and the lowest ask. That's what it, that's what it is. They get together, they go to the prom, the deal is made, and then you move on to the next one, right? <laughs> yep. And I, and I tell people, you know, if, if you're the type of person that, for example, you're going to go to a car dealership and the dealer says to you, hey, you know, the car is $40,000, one of two things happens. You either, I mean, nobody ever says they're going to offer more. That doesn't happen. So that's irrelevant. We'll leave it out. So it's one of two things. You either say yes or you say, no, I'll offer you this, which is less. Okay. Right. Um, if, if you're the type of person to want to offer less, I think you have the beginning steps of what it takes to be a good trader on the retail side. I think that if you say yes to the price right out of, out of the gate, you have to ask yourself, all right, well, you know, are you doing it for convenience? Are you doing it because there is no more inventory and that's the car that you want and you know that there's people that want to buy it? If so, I completely understand. If you're doing it because you didn't think you could negotiate, you ought to rethink why you're there and rethink what you're trading for, you know, because uh, there's, a, you know, trading is everywhere. There's a deal everywhere. Yeah, it's funny you say that because uh, uh, we're all traders in some way. I mean, the most basic form of it is is even if you have a nine to five job, even if you work for the government, it doesn't matter what what your job is. You're trading your time for money. You're still a trader, whether you believe it or not, or, or understand it or not. Uh, trading uh, really involves everything that we do in our life. So maybe that's why when I first discovered trading right out of college in 1998, uh, it just it it seemed like a natural thing to me. And and to a lot of people, it didn't. People were like, "You're gonna do what? You you do what for for work for a career? You're gonna isn't that gambling?" And, and to me, I never thought of it that way. I thought of, I'm just doing something naturally, but there's a dollar sign attached to it. This is what we all do. Right. Right. Interesting. It, very interesting. It's, it's, it's a very, to your point, it's a very natural line of work. Right. Like my wife is a trader. I mean, in a way that like she knows how to work a coupon better than anybody in the world. <laughs> <laughs> she knows where all the deals are. She knows what every store was having for sale. When we go grocery shopping, we don't go to one grocery store. We hit all five of them in town because we got to get the best deals at the best place. <laughs> well, you know, and, and, and to be honest with you, I, that is fun, right? That's that's fun because you know that you're winning. You're winning on two sides. You're winning because you're getting the best available price that's out there, Right. Which, let's be honest, what you're doing is a, let's. You, I think you just coined. I don't know. It's grocery store arbitrage, right? I mean, you're getting the best of, in that scenario, you're getting the best available price for what's out there. But more importantly, there's the self confidence that comes in with you being smart enough to figure that out, right? Well, I can't take any credit. It's all my wife. <laughs> I'm the one sitting there going. Well, let me calculate the opportunity cost for you and the gas cost of going to all these different places. And, uh, you know, your savings end up being kind of negligible. <laughs> <laughs> but that's me, go. right? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> all right. So you worked on a mortgage bond desk for a while. I don't know if, I, yep. if, if that, that's a proper term, right? Mortgage bond desk. That's where you were. Well, I was in the mortgage business. And then when I went to the street, I went to a bond desk. 
And, you know, like I said, I mean, it was really all fixed income. So and, and some things that weren't necessarily fixed income, but paid a high dividend. So like we traded some some REITs, you know, some real estate investment trusts. I wanted to get into something that was a little bit more on the managed money side. And that's what I did for years. So after that, fast forward, my job previous to being at Speed Trader, I was in charge of the entire state of Connecticut for wealth management and risk management on the retail side for, uh, for a bank that was out here. And everything was going great. It looked like the Department of Labor was going to come out with their rule, with the, the DOL rule. And I took a look at my business, my book of business, and I said, geez, you know, I said, I'm staring at it. It was like 70, was it 76 percent of it was IRA money. And I said, you know, maybe this is going to come to a screeching halt, you know. So what I did was I put together some other structured deals. I did very well with those. I said, you know what, my because my kids are my daughters. I, my daughters are young. They're four and two, you know. And at the time, I said, you know what, I don't want to miss them growing up. I think I'm good. I'm good. And I was home. It was the greatest six months of my life. I was home with them. You know, it was awesome. <laughs> and then, and then Craig called. Uh, Craig, being the CEO of Speed Trader, told me he wanted to bring me on. And I'll never forget it. I was telling my wife about. it. I was like, I don't know. You know, I. I love these kids. I mean, you know, I'm, it's so fun watching them grow, but at the same time, I mean, he's on to something. I don't want to miss out on it. What do I do? Yeah. She was hysterical. Sean, she goes, like, she goes, let me ask you a question. She says, if somebody gives you free tickets to the Rolling Stones and Jagger doesn't sing satisfaction, do you care? And I said, well, no, it's free tickets to the Stones. She goes, exactly. Call Craig back and take the job. <laughs> <laughs> so I did in my current role at Speed Trader. I'm the I'm the vice president of business development over there. Let's talk about Speed Trader a little bit because I, I have to be honest. Up until this spring when I met you, Speed Trader was not a firm that I was aware of. Um, and I have to imagine I'm not the only one out there. So, so Don, why don't you take a, a minute or two just to kind of talk about what Speed Trader is, what you guys do, who you cater to, that kind of stuff. Sure. So Speed Trader's been around since 99. Speed Trader is a direct market access firm and we cater to retail traders, retail day traders I should say. Folks that step into and out of the market many times throughout the day to realize the short-term profit. We are a direct market access firm. So what that means is we don't trade against you. We put you on a route that brings you directly to the exchange. And what that is, is that's the opportunity for a better fill. So day traders that are out there, retail day traders that are out there, they know who we are, they use us. You know, we have a few competitors that are doing a good job, but I feel like we are different from a lot of the firms out there in ways that really benefit the day traders that, that come to us. Well, Don, I'd like to talk real quick, uh, since you brought it up, the, the, the notion of direct access, because I think there's probably a lot of people that are maybe relatively new to trading who probably don't know what you and I are talking about. I know what you're talking about, but I know a lot of people don't. Um, because, and this, it's important, especially today, because we've got two things out there, two trading phenomenon, uh, one that's not so recent, but one that's definitely recent, and that is you got Robin Hood on one side, yeah, and you've got all these uh, uh, Forex brokers on the uh, retail Forex brokers on the other side. And maybe you could even throw cryptocurrency exchanges in there. I don't really know much about that. But these, these, these whole concepts of free trading that sound very sexy to somebody who's new to the business, they don't realize that, yes, maybe there's not a line item for a commission on your trade. So that's, quote unquote, a free commission trade. But the cost is is that you don't really have direct access to the market. There is somebody else on the other side of your trade who is licking their chops <laughs> to get at your trade because your order, for whatever reason, is not quite at the fair market value. Right. So, first of all, I'm not going to take anything away from Robinhood 
I think that if you're in it for the long term, they're a resource for you. I agree. If you're new to the game and you say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to buy whatever, 100 shares of XYZ, and I'm going to hold on to it for three years, and I'm going to see what happens. You know, the app is easy to use, and you can do that, and it's quote unquote free, right? Right. You don't care that you got a 10 cents uh, less better price because you're hoping to double your money on this trade and 10 cents is meaningless. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if you are a day trader, okay, direct market access, what it does is it gives you the opportunity to get a better fill. You know, let's say we're going to go long 15,000 shares on something and the price is a dollar, a dollar 80, right? So what direct market access does is it gives you the opportunity for that better fill. So even if I improve your fill by one cent on 15,000 shares, that's $150. Right. So it then becomes a game of what would you rather have? Would you rather have a free trade or would you rather have 150 bucks? <laughs> okay. And, and, and I tell people this, you and I are going to start a restaurant. All right. And we have two vendors for milk fed veal or whatever. Right. And one vendor says, Hey, uh, this is our price for the veal. Six ninety nine a pound or whatever veal's going for, right? And the second vendor says, "Hey, listen, uh, I just want to see you guys do well, so I'm going to give you the veal for free." You'd obviously go with the free guy, right? And we're going to save so much money, and you know maybe we could call like Zagat and have them come by and rate the restaurant, and you know we're going to be able to renovate the upstairs. This is great. We're not paying anything. This guy wants to see us do well. This is wonderful. What are you going to do? When your clients show up, clients, customers show up, and they say, you know something, this veal, it it tastes funny. (laughs) And and then they tell their friends, they're like, you know, you ever been to Donnie's place down the road? I don't know what he's doing. It just tastes funny. It's strange. I don't know what's going on here. Fills that are free, Sean, for day traders, they taste funny. Okay? (laughs) So that's that's really – what we do. We try to get you the best available price. We also try our best to make sure that the locates that you're looking for are there. We really cater to the day trading trading crowd. Uh, people could use uh, uh, somebody like you to find them some, some Tilray stock to short today, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I wasn't in the office today. I was in Staten Island all day today. So, But my phone was going on, going off the hook today. I can only imagine who was looking for what. Well, look, this podcast is going to be evergreen. It's going to live on forever. But just just for a frame of reference for people who are listening to this maybe several months down the road, today is the day, and I am very confident in saying this, today is the day where Tilray, ticker T-L-R-Y, definitely had its blow off top. This stock today, the market just closed about an hour ago. The stock opened, or it closed yesterday at uh, 155-ish, we'll say, 155. Today, I don't know if you saw the chart, Don, but it traded, it pinged to the penny. It hit 300 today. So it went to one, it closed yesterday at 155. Today, it traded as high as 300, and it probably did like one print there, and it immediately collapsed uh 150 points from 300 all the way back down to 150 and then close somewhere around 200. I mean, just a wild day. And I'm very confident in saying this was the top, at least a very important short term top or medium term top. Even <laughs> uh, it was wild for anybody watching. I, you know, I wasn't trading it. I was just, you know, entertainment purposes only. We were just watching this and it was, it was wild. But uh, the, the th- common thing I saw on Twitter and on stock tweets and everywhere is that Everyone to a man was complaining that there is no stock available anywhere to short. I would love to short this thing, but nobody will let me short it. <laughs> well, I think that what you'll find is at that point, you know, and, and I, I'm only speculating. I wasn't in the office today. I have no idea what went on, but I bet you maybe the market makers got involved and held on to it for their own profit, right? Um, you know, maybe they squeezed it out. Who knows? But, you know, moves like that. I mean, that's just incredible. Yeah. I mean, that's 
Uh, those are the types of moves that uh, are reminiscent of the late '90s. We used to see stuff like that all the time. But uh, it's for me yeah. as an old timer in this game, it's it's kind of it's fun to see. It throws me, it brings me back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're the same age, right? I just I, tur- I just turned 41. Oh, well, I'm I'm a little bit older than you, my friend. All right, all right, fair enough. Well, you look younger, so good for you. <laughs> ah, well, uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, anyway, okay, so. So you're at Speed Trader now. Speed Trader caters to the active trader. Uh, you guys don't just handle stocks, though. You guys handle a lot of stuff, right? We do equities and options. We have a ver- for the for the day traders. We have a very GMC attitude. And when I say GMC, GMC does trucks and SUVs. That's it. That's all they do. They don't do cars. They don't do motorcycles. That that's it. We do equities and we do options. Are we rolling out some other things down the road? Yes, we are. But for right now, we really just want to focus on masters of that domain. Right. Making sure that you know the accounts that we have in that space are tip top. Well, uh, you're right in my wheelhouse, my friend. I'm a stock and options guy too. I've traded futures in the past, but I haven't traded futures in years now. Stocks and options are my game. But I'm curious, and if you can't answer this question, I totally understand and we'll scratch it from the record. Mm-hmm. Um, but from your vantage point, from where you sit uh, at, a, at a direct access firm, you obviously see new accounts come in. You see new account, you see old accounts go away for whatever reason. Uh, do you, have you been able to kind of glean any unique insight to the types of accounts that stick around, that, that do well? Because, I mean, it's probably an 80-20 rule. It's probably true for most brokerage firms. you got 20% of the accounts that are actually doing well and making money. Maybe they're not blowing the doors off, but they're at least you know staying alive and, and making progress. And then you got the other 80% that are either churning and burning or going nowhere or hopefully, God forbid, but it happens, a few of them blow up. Um, so those 20% that stick around, is there any like commonalities you've observed over the years that uh, that, that we can learn from? Yeah. What I tell people, me having a 30,000 foot view, I can look at who's been with us, who is profitable. Speed Trader, we have millionaires. We have people with a couple million dollars in their account that trade every day. And I'm proud of that. I mean, that's that's something to be, to, to be able to help that person facilitate that lifestyle is really great, right? And by facilitate, I mean helping them with whatever it is they need on our side. They have a technical support question. They have this. They have that. You know, uh, I need some money. Wire me this. That's great, and I and I love that. What I can tell you with with successful accounts, with successful traders on the retail side, it's almost like a recipe. It's it's not just one thing, but it's many things that makes them successful. You know, and and you know, we could take, and I tell people this. You know, we could take like a hundred cooks and chefs and put them in a room and say, here, you know, make me this. And some people will make the dish and then we'll look at the recipe and go, wow, this person got it. Others will say, ah, you know, it, that's more of a guideline. I'm going to do my own thing. And, you know, what a surprise. They blow up. So what I can tell you is that a lot of it starts with the mindset. And, and, th- and that goes back to, you know, the car example that I was that I was saying earlier, you know, understanding what the market is. It's give and take. Sometimes it's a zero sum game. Sometimes on a momentum, it's not right. Right. Understanding supply and demand. That's the first step. I would say the second step is where you get your ideas from, right? Where are you getting your ideas from? When my wife and I got married, we looked around for five different wedding venues that are, we're in Westchester, in Connecticut. And my wife goes through all the questions that she wanted to ask them, whatever. So that every single time the person would say, hey, you know, what are your questions? And mine were very simple. Who are your food distributors? Because if, if all these places are five star, but they're all getting their food from the same distributor, right? How different could they possibly be? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I, so I tell people, you got to have a way of being able to comb through information. You got you to have the right ideas. 
I will say that a lot of successful traders that we have do use trade ideas. They do, right? Thanks for that plug. No, it, well, it's, <laughs> uh, you know, it's the truth. It's the truth. I can tell you that that's a big part of it, is, is, is where you're getting your ideas from. There's a certain amount of grit that's involved. There's a certain amount of mindset that is involved, okay? What am I going to do with my money when I make it, right? Um, you know, all these things are are very, very important. And then, of course, you have to have money. You know, pattern day trader rule is twenty five thousand. That's and that's not that's not me. That's not me being rude. That's not me saying, hey, you know, listen, you know, with my nose in the air. No, that's that's a rule. Every broker dealer in America has to follow pattern day trader rule twenty five grand, right? Yep. So there's a lot that goes into it. There are some accounts, really good people that blow up. I feel terrible, you know, because money doesn't grow on trees. I mean, you know, it represents a lot of hard work. I can only imagine how defeating that could be. I try to tell people, listen, we're always here for you. If there's anything that we could do, please just give us a call. We'd love to have your business back, you know. But um, to your point, there is a very high rate of attrition in the the day trading game. They're just you know that they're just this. Right. So just is. And, and it's always going to be that way, no matter the tools that are available, because at the end of the day, tools are helpful, but you still have to pull the trigger. You still have to make the decisions. You still have to ride those drawdowns and those emotions that come with it. And that's where the rubber hits the road. Uh, and, you know, it's funny, you, you reminded me of something that I like to say a lot. And uh, anyone who knows me or listens to this podcast has probably heard me repeat it many times. So I apologize. But I like to talk about the paradox of successful trading. And that paradox is you could fill a room with 100 successful traders. And I could promise you all 100 of those traders probably almost guaranteed do something different. Every one of them, they might trade some of the same products. They might have some of the same basic strategies. But when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, every single one of them makes money differently. And what the paradox is, is that there are infinite ways to make money in the market. But there's only like five basic ways that everybody loses in the market. So why is it so goddamn hard to make money when there's so many ways to make money? And there's only five ways to lose money. So why don't we just avoid those five, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I haven't come up with an answer on that, but that's just the thing I like to talk about. And in fact, I think I brought that up in the uh, presentation where you and I met uh, this spring. I think I mentioned that in my talk. It's uh, it's a truly maddening thing. And, and I, I run a meetup group here in Colorado and, and we get like 20 traders come out twice a month uh, where we just, you know, drink some beers and talk about markets and whatever the trader life, you know, whatever, whatever that entails. Sure. And, and we always get a couple new folks every meeting, you know, people who've never been out before. And most, in most cases, they're relatively new to trading. Um, and, you know, it's like, it's funny. You get, you get the same, same questions over and over. Like, what's the one thing you do that makes you money? And, and what's the one thing I should do to avoid? And, and who should I trade through? <laughs> you know, like basic questions. And, and I just feel bad telling them. I'm like, look, it's trading's hard. It's going to take time. Uh, I don't care who, who you're working with or who your, who your mentor is or what guru you're paying on the internet. Trading is going to be hard and you're going to have to make mistakes and you're going to have to lose money because that's how you learn. And the name of the game is just lasting because <laughs> you, you learn through experience and experience takes time. And the only way you do that is by keeping your losses small and, and learning from them. And, uh, that's a frustrating, frustrating answer for a lot of people to hear, I think. Well, you know what it is? I want, and when I say you, I mean the king's you. you know, I, mean, I mean everybody that's listening, not just you, know, you, but everybody that's listening to the podcast. Yeah. I want you to go up to an NFL player, and I want you to ask him how he makes it through the game without getting injured. <laughs> how do you do it? Right? It's the same type of question. You know, with the markets, there are so many pitfalls. I knew a guy in we used to call him the put bomber because he would write these ridiculously out of the money puts cash secured with the with the cash in his account and you know they would expire and and he would keep the premium 
And this guy was killing it. And he found it. He found the way to do it until the flash crash happened. So, you know, again, I mean, there's so many pitfalls that are out there. To your point, yeah, you got to learn. You have to be willing as a trader to be successful. You have to be willing to say to yourself, you know what? I am going to be uncommon amongst a group of uncommon people. Because if you're successful as a trader, that's exactly what you are. You are uncommon amongst a group of people who are trying to be successful, right? Wow, I love that. And we're going to use that for the title of this podcast, I think, because that's great. Uh, sure. and, and you are so, so right. Uh, when people are always asking for the magic, I don't want to say the magic bullet, but they're, you know, they're like, Hey, what's the thing I need to do to be successful? And, 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 and you kind of hit it right there. It's like, well, you kind of have to do something different than everybody else is doing because in our business, unfortunately, the sad truth is the majority fail. Yeah. So you don't want to be with the majority. No. And if you have an idea of what the majority is doing, you should probably be looking in the other direction. That's right. And that's, that's right. That's a tough thing to think about too. I mean, because in most walks of life, being with the majority, maybe you're not going to be a rock star, but with the majority, you could at least be comfortable. You could live a comfortable life. I mean, that's what the middle class of America is, right? I mean, we're the majority and it's, you know, we're all okay. We're doing okay. Right. Yeah. Yep. But in trading, if you're with the majority, that means you're losing and that's not yeah. a good place to be. No. No, it's not a good place to be. You know, I remember, as a matter of fact, at the conference that we were at down in Orlando, Canal got up on stage. Canal Desai gets up on stage. He's the best. He's hysterical. He's great. You know, then he talks about one of the things he says, you know, you have to look at over a thousand charts to be able to call within a certain degree of accuracy. And when he said that, there were a few people in the room and the expression on their face said it all. It's like, oh man, I don't have time to look at a thousand try. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and that's what I mean. Uncommon amongst a group of uncommon people. And you know, at the end of the day, you you got to be willing to to just put the work in. Otherwise, it's going to be a very 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 painful experience. You know, it's funny that you brought up that Canal Desai um, anecdote there because for many in the many in attendance at that conference when they saw Kunal speak, you know, they maybe knew of Kunal just from his Twitter profile, and and you know, they didn't they're not members of his service or anything like that, but they know of him kind of peripherally, and they see that he's successful. They see the you know the the kind of the lifestyle brand that he's kind of built around himself. And they, their first thought was, oh, great, I'm going to watch Kunal and I'm going to learn how to be a millionaire like him real quick just by following these one, two, three super basic things. And then when Kunal drops the hard truth on him of, bro, this shit's boring. It takes a lot of work <laughs> and a lot of time. I go through thousands of charts every night. And you're right. That's when that everyone in the room's like, oh, well, that's not as sexy and as exciting as I thought this was. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's really true. And you got to understand, I mean, before I came to Speed Trader, prior to running this, you know, that division for the bank, I was at Scott Trade. I was at Scott Trade, but I watched people do, you know, the the buy and hold. I, I watched them do managed money on the cheap. I mean, I, I watched them do a bunch of things. There was a handful of uh, full of day traders, but but they were doing different stuff. Point is. People that would call in their orders, okay, or, or, or you know, high frequency traders that we had that were getting this, you know, ridiculous deal, right? Or, or even, you know, high frequency traders that I knew down in the city. You know, this is what blew me away about the retail side is these people, what made them success, they would never tell you what made them successful. Never. You know, it's like, these are my 11 herbs and spices. Get your own. You know, that, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. So, you know, when I, when, like I said, I had that call with Craig, I went in to see him, decided to take the job over at, over at Speed Trader, really just immersed myself in everything that the retail traders were doing, the retail day traders were doing. 
And, you know, you have guys like Canal that are willing to show you. I mean, nobody would ever show you anything, you know, or like, you know, Patrick Whelan puts out his stuff for free on YouTube. I'm not, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's amazing to me. But the one thing that all these guys have in common is that you got to put the work in, right? So, you know, that's another thing. It's like to be a member of a room is one thing, but to actually do, you know, you got to put the helmet on, pick up the bat and swing at the pitches as they come in. That's it. That's, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. And, uh, and sometimes surprisingly, surprisingly to you and I, but surprisingly, that comes as a shock to people who are new to this business. They're like, eh, I just got to buy this system or subscribe to this newsletter or get this commission rate or trade this product and I'm going to be great. Right. Everything's going to work out. And, and it doesn't work out that way. Well, hey, uh, so, so you reminded me, and, and one of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, kind of a shameless plug here, but uh, since you brought up Canal and his, his great speech that you and I saw, you and I are teaming up uh, with Trade Ideas, putting on a great conference in October, uh, yes. October 20th uh, in San Diego, uh, in which uh, Kunal is one of the speakers. We also have uh, the keynote speaker is going to be Dr. Brett Steenbarger, well known for those who've been around social finance for a while. Uh, he's a trading psychologist. He's worked with uh, many of the big uh, big hedge funds out there on the street. He's, he does a lot of work with SMB Capital in New York, uh, and he's got a wildly popular blog that is must read material for any trader. It's trader feed is what he calls his blog. You can Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about. Also an author, he's wrote, written four, I think four books, uh, maybe more. Uh, I feel like I've read, read at least four of his books. Just a hell of a guy, a hell of a smart guy and very motivating guy. And I've seen him speak before and he blew me away. And I'm very excited to have him as our keynote speaker. I'm very excited to have Kunal, and and I only met Kunal for the first time at that conference where you and I were at, at down in Orlando, and uh, I only knew of Kunal just from what I'd seen on Twitter. Uh, he and I had never really spoken, I don't believe, until that conference, and, and great guy. He His presentation was amazing. I mean, when he was done, I was like, I'm ready to tackle the markets, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I was, oh, yeah. He, he got me inspired. And so he's going to bring that to our conference. I'm very excited about that. And then, of course, we got Brian Shannon and JC Peretz, Alpha Trends and All Star Charts, respectively. Uh, so it's a, it's a really great co conference that I'm proud to be a part of. And we're very uh, happy that, that you have helped make this happen. You and uh, Speed Trader are, are come in, coming in as one of our sponsors. Uh, so people will be able to get to learn more about your company and what you guys do. So, um, hey, I, I really appreciate you, you helping out. I mean, it's going to it's going to be a great event. Yeah, no, it's that's our pleasure. Of course. Cool. And for those of you, uh, we're just about I think we've just about sold out of tickets. So uh, you're probably running out of time to get tickets uh, to attend in person. But uh, you can always go to trade trade ideas.com and, and find out more. Uh, but if you can't make it uh, in person, you know, maybe you're not in San Diego and can't get there for whatever reason, uh, we will be doing a live stream. And this is the thing that uh, my team wanted me to, to plug here in the, the call here is uh, we, there will be a live stream. You could sign up now to register for it. It is free. So you'll be able to watch the You'll be able to watch the show live as it's happening, and then you'll be able to see archived versions of every segment uh, later on. But if you go to trade-ideas.com forward slash live stream, live stream is one word, uh, you will be able to get, you'll be able to sign up for the live stream. So we encourage you to do that. Great. Well, okay. Shameless plug over. I apologize. I just had to get that in there because we were talking about Kunal, so that got me excited. Well, Don... You and I have talked offline a little bit. Uh, so it sounds to me that you yourself personally haven't done much trading for your own account. Is that right? You've always just worked at different firms at different desks uh, doing that, right? I do trade, but my strategy is completely different. It's actually completely boring. <laughs> okay. There's nothing um, wrong with boring. Boring is sexy in our world. No. I mean, I. Um, it's got – and you know, I do quite a bit with options. I do quite a bit – with equities, but you know, the idea of it is really simple. And I, I tell you, I, and again, this is where we kind of teeter on the brink of advice. So I, I will say that I called it a strategy. What I will say is that it works for me. It works within my comfort zone. And I think that that's something that all traders should really kind of ask themselves is what is it that I'm comfortable doing? The truth of the matter is, is I've got thousands of accounts to look after you know, short locates that are coming in, people are, 
you know, hey, what's going on with this? Oh, oh I want you to meet this person. Hey, that's, you know, can you help me out with this? So many things to look after day to day that to me, I only follow about 15 different equities. It's the same equities that I've been following for like the past seven or eight years. And a lot of what I do is just covered calls, collect a dividend, hang out. It's very boring because I have I have other things to to tend to, you right. know. And Sean, I'm here to tell you, I mean, there are day traders that make much more money with their account than I do with mine. But, you know, like I said, it's it's very boring, but it works for me. Well, I mean, look, that's a great place to be. Uh, and I, too, am in a similar vein. I mean, I, I work for Trade Ideas. That keeps me busy uh, pretty much all day long. Uh, I really only have about, or I limit myself to only about 45 minutes, give or take, uh, when the market first opens for me to execute the trades I need to do for my, my trading, uh, I've, I've run three different strategies, but all three of them individually are very low touch. Right. I'll, I'll put the trades on first thing in the morning. Uh, if, if trades need to happen, sometimes there are no trades that need to be done, but if, if there are trades that need to be done for my positions, uh, I'll generally do it in the first half hour or so, maybe the first 45 minutes. And then the rest of the day I'm tending to, to work. And, and I have alerts that go off if something needs to happen, if something moves dramatically, uh, if I've got a position I need to adjust or a stop, I stop loss, I need to execute that kind of thing. Cause I'm usually at my desk for most of the day. Um, so I'm here if an alert goes off, something I need to tend to, and I could usually take care of that, no problem. Just give me, you know, give me a minute, no problem. But yeah, I, uh, I, I too can't really sit here and stare at the market for seven hours a day and 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 watch it tick by tick and do day trading. I'm just a, I don't have the bandwidth like you, but b, I don't even really have the inclination to do that anymore. My my first four years in the business, I from '98 to '02, I was a high frequency, uh, you know, coming in at the end of the SOS bandit days, if, if you remember that term. So I was trading NASDAQ stocks, doing hundreds of thousands of shares a day, executing a thousand sh- uh, trades in total each day. And I sat in a chair and grind, grinded it out for seven hours a day. Physically, mentally, emotionally, I can't possibly do that anymore. I mean, I just, I, I don't have the interest. I don't have the stamina to do it. Um, just no thank you. But swing trading uh, stocks and doing option spreads, uh, that's my bread and butter. And those things don't need to be tended to on a tick by tick basis. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, it's really funny because my heart goes out to the guys and girls that are getting started. So they're trading the open. Maybe they're trading the close, but they're doing their research. They're up early. They're trading the open. And then they go to work. Mm -hmm. Wow. That takes a lot of dedication. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. Uh, early, in my early days uh, when I started trading, I was uh, I started in the East Coast, but that was in Chicago. So uh, only one hour behind the East. But uh, I was working for a prop trading firm. This was like 2006, 2007, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, and they had an office in San Diego. And they asked me to come out to San Diego and spend a couple of weeks with their traders out there just to, you know, sit, sit with the big dogs. That's where, that's where their best traders were. And so I took the invitation and I went out there and spent two weeks there. And, and one of the first observations I had was, okay, so the market opens at 630 out here. That, that's brutal. I mean, I was in my 20s at the time. Like, oh, that's that doesn't feel good. <laughs> yeah. um, but that aside, uh, I'm in the office. Market over 6:30. We're cranking it out. We're doing our trades, banging it out all you know for a couple hours. And then you know 9:30. This is Pacific time. 9:30 ish would roll around, and all of a sudden, this room that had 35, somewhere between 35 and 50 traders in it, uh, all of a sudden it clears out. And there's only like five or six guys left in there. And that's the way it is for the rest of the day. And, and I, I asked one of the guys, I'm like, where is everybody that was here this morning? What are they doing? And they're like, oh, they all have nine to five jobs. <laughs> He's like, they come in here, they trade the first two hours of the market to the first two, three hours. And then they go to their nine to five jobs. And I was like, oh man, that's actually kind of cool. Like, especially if you're new in trading and, and you know, your income's not very steady, or maybe you're in that Part that learning curve, or you're still losing money. Having that peace of mind, knowing that you've got a nine to five job to go to to pay the bills while you're trying to learn a new craft, that's that's a pretty good thing. And I was like, man, yeah. these West Coast traders, they got it. That's that's an edge that they have that nobody else had. Yeah, 
I tell you that, and this goes back to what we were talking about, you know, it takes dedication, right? So again, getting up that early, research, the stress, the anxiety, the highs, the lows, to then go to work <laughs> for a boss who probably needs you to be even keel throughout the day, that's and produce for him or yeah. her. A boss that doesn't give a shit that you just bought the high in TLRY this afternoon or this morning. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It That takes a lot of dedication and a lot of hard work. That's very uncommon. <laughs> All right, Don. Well, look, I've had you for just about an hour here, and I promised I wouldn't keep you for too long. Uh, it, it was a pleasure talking with you and pleasure getting to know you more. And uh, I'm going to see you next week in New York, and then I'm going to see you again in uh, San Diego in October to our conference. So lots of lots of time for us to, to hang out and keep this going. But, uh, hey, man, thanks for, for A, for participating in the, the podcast, B, for working with me on some things uh, over the summer with trade ideas, and C, for your participation in our conference coming up in October. We're, we're very excited you're, you're playing along. Absolutely, Sean, it was my pleasure. Anytime you guys need anything, just give me a call. You know, it was, it was an absolute pleasure to be on the, on the uh, podcast tonight. Well, what do you think, folks? That was my friend, Don Hensley. Great guy, great chat. Hey, while I still have you, I just wanted to remind you, if you want to check into the live stream of the Trade Ideas Summit 2018, Rise with the Machines, Coming up on October 20th, 2018, head to trade-ideas.com forward slash live stream and you can register to watch for free. Take care, everybody.